The landlady's true nature unfolds gradually, revealing her sinister character. Portraying her as malevolent from the outset would undermine Billy's credibility and diminish the story's element of mystery and surprise. Therefore, a disparity between appearances and reality is essential. Early indications of Billy's youthful naivety illustrate his tendency to accept things at face value. He admires the authoritative figures at the head office, perceiving them as perpetually efficient without questioning their actual achievements. The illuminated window of the bed and breakfast presents an inviting facade amidst the dilapidated surroundings. With its vibrant display of chrysanthemums appearing as the most appealing spot on the street. However, appearances prove deceiving as it turns out to be the least desirable option. Billy's reliance on appearances extends to his interpretation of the parrot and dachshund inside the establishment, viewing their presence as a positive sign. Yet, as events unfold, he realizes that the presence of animals does not necessarily indicate a trustworthy environment. The landlady initially exudes an air of familiarity and warmth, resembling the mother of a close school friend welcoming one for the Christmas holidays. At first glance, she appears entirely benign and trustworthy. She mistakenly addresses Billy twice by incorrect names. Mr. Perkins and Mr. Wilkins. Initially appearing absent-minded, she doesn't seem capable of orchestrating any nefarious schemes. However, this could be a deliberate tactic to project an innocuous facade, intentionally using the wrong name to cultivate an impression of harmlessness. Inviting Billy to join her by the fire for tea sounds inviting and secure, yet unbeknownst to him, this marks a pivotal moment from which he won't be able to take any action. Following this, the veil of deception is lifted. The landlady discloses that the other two young men from the guest book never departed and are still residing on the third floor. Although Billy doesn't register this as a direct threat, the reader's suspicions are solidified. While the specifics of his impending fate remain uncertain, it becomes evident that the landlady is far from benign. Foreshadowing is evident from the outset. With the initial description of the weather as deadly cold and the wind akin to a flat blade of ice, hinting at the perilous circumstances awaiting Billy. During the tea-serving moment, Billy notices the landlady's red fingernails, evoking associations with blood. This detail foreshadows her involvement in nefarious deeds and literal bloodshed. A significant instance of foreshadowing occurs later in the narrative when Billy reflects on the stuffed parrot and realizes the dog by the fire is also lifeless and stuffed. While Billy's ultimate fate remains ambiguous, this parallels his eventual demise. Irony permeates the narrative. The landlady meticulously prepares a bed for Billy, complete with a hot water bottle and the option to light the gas fire, despite knowing he won't have the chance to utilize any of these amenities. When informing Billy about the legal requirement to sign the guest book, she humorously remarks, we don't want to go breaking any laws at this stage in the proceedings. Do we? Her feigned concern for adherence to the law carries a comedic irony, given her ulterior motives. Upon descending to the warm and inviting living room, Billy perceives himself as a lucky fellow. However, unbeknownst to him, he is actually one of the most unfortunate individuals in the area over the past two years. 
Indicators of peril for Billy include the suspiciously low cost of the room, the landlady's selective criteria for her lodgers, preferring young, attractive men like Billy, hinting at underlying motives, her claim of fretting over Billy's arrival, despite being unaware of it until the last moment, revealing a self-centered concern. Her insistence on Billy signing the guest book before retiring, implying a sense of urgency or control, the antiseptic aroma emanating from her, linked to her taxidermy activities. Her remark about Mr. Temple's flawless physique raising further alarm, and the bitter almond flavor of the tea suggesting the presence of cyanide, indicating potential danger. At this critical juncture, the reader might expect Billy to promptly exit the premises. However, instead of reacting, he continues conversing as if nothing is amiss. Billy seems to attribute the landlady's revelations to her previously observed eccentric behavior, perhaps dismissing it as further evidence of her supposed oddity. This perception may lead Billy to feel a sense of superiority, viewing himself as intellectually superior to her and, consequently, not in any immediate danger. His lack of inquiry or clarification implies that he doesn't take her statement seriously and simply wishes to proceed with the conversation. Billy recalls encountering these names in the newspaper, associating them with mysterious disappearances. He recollects that there was some connection between the two individuals. It's possible that they were both last reported seen in Bath. Alternatively, they might have been linked due to their status as travelers. Billy specifically remembers Mr. Mulholland from the newspaper, noting that he was on a walking tour. As for Mr. Temple, Billy speculates that he could have been traveling for business similar to Billy's own purpose in Bath. 